I have us at one o'clock Eastern. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just going to go for who's first on my screen. So, uh, Dave Hargrove, will you be the first one to introduce yourself? Sure, to sure. Yep. I'm Dave Hargrove. I'm from uh, Crayons to Classrooms, Dayton, Ohio. Um, I'm the operations manager. Um, we service about 3,500 teachers. Um, we have 2,000 square feet in our store, give or take. And normally we have about 35 to 40 teachers a day. We're paring that down to probably around half to two thirds of that. Barb, going on. Yep. Good morning, everybody. I'm Barbara Blaylock. I'm the founder and executive director of Treasures for Teachers. We're here in um, Tempe, Arizona. Um, we are one of the few centers that have opened so far. We opened on May 5th, so I'll talk a little bit about that when we get deeper. We currently serve about 4,500 teachers a year. Um, that probably won't change and it may even go up because we're hearing that the need is going to be even greater now with the, um, you know, the things in place. We have a 20,000 square foot building and about 12,000 square feet of that space is our shopping area. Um, so it's very spread out. Um, so we've been very fortunate to not have, have to worry too much about social distancing, but I will talk about how we put that into place. Um, I think that's it. Was there anything else? That sounds good. Um, just doing introductions. Uh, Mary Lee and Hector, you guys want to tell us about your situation? Sure. I'm Mary Lee Baxter. I'm the program director for the Broward Education Foundation, Hector Javier. Um, is the store manager for the Broward Education Foundation School Supply Center. And I'll let Hector talk about a little bit more. Yes, uh, we, have, um, we service about 3,500 teachers. Um, we, our store and our warehouse is about 7,000 square feet, 4,000 for the warehouse, 3,000 for the store. Uh, we traditionally service uh, uh, 125 to 150 teachers a week. Um, we're looking at cutting that down to about 110, 112, somewhere in that ballpark. And then David, give us a brief overview of what you've got going on in Indy. Yes, David Hobbs, I'm Director of Operations at Teachers Treasures in Indianapolis, Indiana. Our overall store is about uh, 30,000 square feet. The majority of that is a warehouse. Our store is probably around uh, six to 7,000 square feet. Um, the number of teachers that we typically have in, in, a, in a typical year is we service over 5,500 teachers. As far as what we're forecasting for this year, we're hoping to be able to do the same. Uh, we're, we're introducing scheduling, and with the scheduling in increments, uh, we, can, we can serve more teachers than we typically would serve in, in a regular day. Um, so I think I, that was all the questions. Yeah. And that leads us in perfectly kind of to where our, um, our second question. Um, I'm going to post uh, the questions as we kind of get through them into the chat for everybody. Um, we're going to talk about um, um, how people are adjusting shopping access for the teachers um, starting a back to school and anybody can jump in. Um, are you curtailing or eliminating your shopping in any way? Um, are you adding additional options as more hours, school delivery, drive through, pre-packed boxes. Um, what are you doing to try to, you know, keep serving the teachers with sometimes having to limit the numbers in stores? Uh, Broward Education Foundation School Supply Center can, can answer that question. Um, currently, right now, we're, we've tried A, B, C, D. <laughs> because we really don't know as everybody. Um, we won't know till June 16th what is going to happen, but we have decided to um, uh, still have shopping, um, we'll limit the number of teachers, we'll have uh, time limits, um, and also they'll have, uh, they'll make appointments to, to shop. We also have decided that we would like to reach out to our teachers to see that if they feel comfortable shopping. Um, we'd also have um, online is going to be a huge component where they can order online, we'll pre-package up everything. If they wanna do curbside pickup, we can uh, walk outside and put it in the trunk. We are also very blessed to have a wonderful relationship with the Broward County School District, and they have also offered to help us with our distribution of supplies. Um, 
we're also, um, so we've kind of gone in that direction. And then we have been considering of just making the center a distribution center. Um, again, that's got to go through a lot of different uh, processes to make, you know, to see if we're going to do that. And again, when we tally the teachers, that's one of the questions we're going to ask them. Because we're so far north, we have a lot of schools that are south and can't make it to us. So if we become like an Amazon, that means it will be a distribution center. It still will be a touch and feel for our donors so they can see what we're doing, so they know where their money is going. But again, that is, that is going to be in a while. We really don't know if we're going to go in that direction. But if we do um, start shopping at the center, which will be, I think, another panel question, we have to take into many considerations, um, policies and procedures to outfit the center. Hector, did you want to say anything? No, you know, we're expanding our online program significantly. Um, we have a mobile program that we're going to be expanding as well. Uh, we're adding curbside pickups. And like Mary Lee said, uh, the school district is helping us. Um, I'd be interested to see what other centers have to but. Uh, um, about the online program, but uh, our school system helps us out with the deliveries. So uh, just a real quick interjection. Uh, we had a question about uh, what um, platform you use for appointments, and then for uh, to follow up on that, um, for online, are you do you already have a platform picked out for that as well? We use Fred Weber's Apple Base, the program he developed, and that has appointments and online uh, online ordering and everything uh, built in. We've been doing appointments forever. Uh, we'll be really significantly increasing our the way we use the online. But that's something we just touched on. So we don't have a lot of practical experience on it yet. But we will be did, jumping heavy into the online. It, but it's built into his program. Here in Indiana, we really won't know what the school year will look like until the beginning of July when the governor uh, starts the initiative on, on how things will move. So we're really looking at things in, in several different scenarios. Uh, the first scenario, and this we have we have three uh, distribution programs. We have our, our our main large store. We have a satellite store that's in a in a uh, district building, and we have a mobile outreach program. So we're sort of looking at different scenarios of how it will come into play and how it will affect all of those those different programs. You know, the the, the ideal scenario is that uh, the school resumes close to normal as possible either a hybrid of uh, virtual teaching or in-classroom teaching. The other, the other scenario would be, you know, the worst case scenario, which is, is the shelter in place where, you know, the, the store definitely would close. Um, and we would have, you know, go to do some online as well as uh, pick up just uh, drive by distribution. Uh, the biggest changes we have going into the school year is uh, we do also use Apple based Fred Weber system. We are uh, starting to do scheduling. We're starting to do online registration. And, we're, and since we are a fee-based system, we're starting to, we'll be starting to do online payment as well. Um, scheduling, we're looking to have about 25 teachers in the building at a time in 45 minute increments. Um, and, um, with, you know, and we, we're just starting to, to delve into some online uh, type uh, shopping uh, next week. We're offering some uh, overstock of larger items that are taking up room in the warehouse that we need to get out. We're offering those to a pilot group of teachers. Um, those large type items are usually available in the store during shopping times as what we call treasure chest items. We will be doing online shopping for uh, during the school year as well because we, we want to create more floor space uh, in, our, in our footprint. And, uh, you know, we're, we're removing, obviously we're moving, you know, carts only that we need. We're encouraging uh, teachers to pack as they shop. That way there's not any, any lingering after checkout. Uh, we laid out a, a store uh, uh, shopping pattern uh, with, with one-way shopping aisles uh, and with one area that, we're, that is books. We're considering that sort of our uh, bottleneck. That'll be the last place that teachers shop. So in case they're getting close to the 45 minutes, we can push them on to, uh, to check out. Go ahead, Barb. Okay. 
Well, I'm a little bit different than all of you, as you know, and um, so I'm going to tell you what we did prior to opening and then what we're doing now while we're opened, um, because some of this might still apply to you. So we did do drive through giveaways um, while we were closed. So we were getting donations from Staples and other um, organizations of books and um, supplies that the teachers could use. So we pre-packed those and we did a drive through giveaway. And so it was contactless. Um, the teachers would just open their trunks and we would put the, it was mo mostly paper, um, paper products like toilet paper, paper towels and books. And they would drive through. We used Sign Up Genius to schedule those. So we had, um, I wanna say we had like 25 teachers every half an hour come through for a period of about four hours and it filled up right away. We did that twice while we were closed and it was very successful and they were very grateful. It was another way also to move product because we weren't open. So we were kind of getting a lot of donations. We were still receiving donations. Um, so we did that. Um, we are not doing anything online where they can order. And then um, we, we have a mobile program as well and we're working on that and that will, um, we'll start distributing product through a mobile program once school starts. In Arizona, school will start at the end of July. So we've already, um, we already know what the school is gonna look like. Everybody is going back to school as normal. However, the school districts have flexibility on how they reopen. So Arizona has given them guidelines of what, those, what they recommend, but every school district will um, decide what's best for them. So it could be just going back to school as normal, there could be a hybrid, there could be some distance learning. But right now, as far as everybody's concerned, the teachers are going back at the end of July. So we anticipate getting very busy within the next two weeks because they'll, be, um, they'll have about six weeks to prepare for, um, for school. Then we, um, we opened on May 5th, and prior to opening, we did set up the store. We made sure that there was lots of space. Um, I did put a document together, and I think Joel will probably send it out, or we can send it out later. Um, we, I purchased um, social distancing stickers, um, sneeze guards. Um, I, I printed all of the posters from the CDC. They have beautiful print material, guidelines that they recommend. Um, of posters that we laminated and we posted within the, the restrooms, the kitchens, all, all around the um, building just to remind people of what to follow as far as the CDC guidelines. When we opened the first week, um, we had it scheduled so we'd have 10 teachers every half an hour and they would have 30 minutes to shop. That worked really, really well. Everybody went through. One of the things that really helped us to kind of keep track of the teachers coming and going and making sure everything got sanitized is we only had 10 shop. We have like probably a hundred shopping carts, but we only allowed 10 shopping carts. So they would take their shopping cart and then the only time that they could go back in is once the shopping cart was returned, we sanitized it and then the next teacher could take it. So we actually had a place set up for the returning shopping carts that hadn't been sanitized. So, so they wouldn't get mixed up with the ones that had. Another thing we put into place is outside as the teachers were leaving, if they were wearing disposable masks or gloves, we put a garbage can out there and asked them to dispose of them there. It just was something to remind them not to just like throw them away or, or put them in their car. We wanted them to have a place to dispose of them. We were fortunate to get 3000 masks donated to us from Intel. So if you have any businesses or companies that want to do something, ask them for donations of stuff like that. We are requiring the teachers to wear masks. Um, they have not had any problems with them whatsoever. If they show up without a mask, we have masks to provide them. We aren't requiring gloves or any other protection, but we definitely recommend and encourage it. We are not allowing any visitors or any children in the building. Children have been kind of a Controversy, some teachers, we, we've always had a child policy where parents could bring their children because it's hot in Arizona. We never want anybody to be tempted to leave them outside or in a car. Um, so that has been probably our biggest controversy was not allowing children right now, but we just think it's the best for the kids and everybody else um, in place. We have not brought back volunteers yet. They will be coming back next week. Um, we put together policies and procedures for the volunteers to return. 
We, we, we have never used a sign-up system for our volunteers, but we are changing that and now having to go to a sign-up system so that we can track how many people are in the building at any one time, making sure we're keeping the social distancing and they're sanitizing. We put together um, checkoff sheets for sanitizing between volunteer groups, um, cleaning in the bathroom, so making sure that everybody's signing off, everybody has a task, and those don't get overlooked. We can't just assume that people are going to remember, so we have a sign off. And that also gives the volunteers and the staff security knowing that we are staying on top of the um, sanitizing and the disinfecting. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I have to share. Um, Barb shared quite a bit there. Um, I will be sending on um, some of the documents that everybody shared uh, with everybody that uh, registered. Um, I think um, already I'm seeing a bunch of questions about volunteers. I really do think that needs to be its own um, section where we talk about volunteers, um, just because there's so many questions from signing them up to how they get in. Um, kind of keeping today's more focused um, a little bit on, like well, obviously I have to touch on volunteers, but more focused on the physical aspects of um, prepping the store. Um, sorry, David. You have all right, idea. that's all right. Um, we're doing in store. Uh, normally, we start around the second week of August, right around the time school starts, or right actually right before. Uh, this year, we're opening up July 13th, uh, expanding our hours during the month of July and the first week of August, so we can try to get more teachers in. We are limiting. Uh, we do appointments. We use 3C, always have here, and we're doing every 15 minutes two teachers every 15 minutes to limit, since our store is only 2,000 square feet. Uh, we're doing the uh, sign uh, one-way signs like uh, David is in Indy and lay those down in the store. Uh, still working on our volunteers, not to touch too much on that, but getting them getting them back in the swing of things. We just started some this week working on, on some projects here. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And once, once we get into August, we'll uh, curtail our hours when school starts. And we don't have online, uh, nor do we have a mobile unit, so it's really simple here for us. Um, I don't know if I have much else to add right now. Just the expanded hours in July for us. We're going to be open one to six to get as many teachers in as we can. Sounds like quite a few of you guys are expanding hours, um, especially or, or lengthening hours or adding sessions to try to fit as many teachers in as we space them out a little bit. Um, I want to touch on something that Barb touched on quite a bit is uh, what are you requiring from shopper behavior? Um, are you requiring masks? Um, are you requiring uh, gloves? Um, obviously, a lot of talk about appointments. Um, are you encouraging them to bring their own bags, pack everything as they go? Um, or, and then are you banning uh, children, any other companions, anybody else in the store? What are your thoughts on? Um, Our education, education Foundation uh, School Supply Center can answer that. Um, we are really outfitting the center. We are doing temperature checks um, before the teacher comes in. We're also asking them to sanitize their hands. Um, we will be having directional signage. We are considering um, outfitting our front desk with plexiglass because that has been a huge recommendation from our uh, committee. They would like to see plexiglass in place. Um, we know it's going to be difficult for checkout, so we're going to have to reorganize our checkout. We're going to be asking that every teacher wear a mask before they come inside the center. We will not be allowing any guests. We don't allow guests anyway, um, but this time we're going to be very strict on that policy. Um, and um, we'll be doing between each um, each three, uh, every three hours, we'll be doing a deep cleaning of, of, the, of the center um, before the next ones come in, just to make sure that we're, we're fully, am I missing anything, Hector? No, we'll be cleaning before and afterward and in between every shop, uh, every checkout. We'll be uh, cleaning the, the counters and cleaning the carts yeah. um, after each checkout. Yeah, but the most important thing is the plexiglass and the temperature readings and the masks. Masks. Yeah, they're going to be asked to bring their own masks. If they don't, we will have some on hand, but we're going to be asking them to uh, to bring their own. Our employees will be wearing gloves as well. 
Um, also, throughout the center, we'll be having paper towel and um, sanitizer. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in next. Um, appointments, if I read these, requiring appointments we always have, so that's, that's uh, no different for us. Uh, requiring PPE employees, yes, um, when the shoppers are, when, when we're out in the store. Uh, we are following Ohio guidelines on, for the customers are not required here in Ohio and we are not gonna require uh, the teachers to wear them. Uh, recommending it, asking them to, but we're not gonna require that. Uh, bringing their own bags and boxes, we have disposable bags here uh, they can use or if they wanna bring their own and they will bag their own. That's pretty much how we've run things in the past is um, bagging their own product as they go. So that's not gonna be a change for the for the teachers. Uh, banning companions, that's a policy we've had for for a long time. We don't allow the children to come in with them or, or guests to come in with them. So again, that's not a, a change for our shoppers here. We do have hand sanitizer stations set up and we're gonna clean. We have clipboards that we give the teachers those will be cleaned after each use. Shopping carts cleaned after each use. And uh, pens we give to the teachers. Um, many of you, maybe some of you received National Pen Company last year. So we're gonna, we're gonna take some of those pens and let the teachers keep them or toss them, whatever they wanna do with them. Well, thank you, Dave. Um, that really gets into it. Um, I think kind of move on because a lot of you have already touched on this. Um, Sanitizing the uh, physical space, like um, talked about, um, I know Broward County told us they're cleaning between each shop and doing deep cleans after every shift. Um, like what cleaning products and items are you keeping on staff, um, on hand for staff for sanitizing? Do you have any projected cost? Are you getting those donated? Um, does anybody have any ventilation concerns? And um, I know I will share um, Barb's document where she talked about where she got her stuff, but if anybody has any free or low cost PPE sources, um, feel free to share those as well. I just started looking into that. In fact, I had a meeting with uh, a gentleman who's done a lot of different kind of handy work type stuff in the building. Plexiglass is at a premium right now. And it's, it's also a premium price. Uh, um, use Google and Google sneeze guards because there's a lot of different options besides plexi of things that are that are, are in standard sizes uh, that can be suspended from ceiling like more of a of a thick film uh, as opposed to a heavy plexiglass um, those are also custom size as well um, so we we're looking at you know looking at at, at those options at check in and check out all the other sanitizing things that people are mentioning, uh, you know, we're, we're on board with that as well. Um, the one thing you know, for, for uh, our satellite program, since we're using a classroom in a school and check out and check in will be in the hallway, we have to be creative about what we can do because we have to be mobile. Uh, so for a quick and easy barrier, uh, and this will be for mobile outreach as well, um, uh, are those rolling coat racks, the coat, coat rack rails that extend out to 66 inches, a very thick vinyl shower curtain, mm. curtain rod uh, hooks, and then you can sort of either cut it to length or roll it up and fasten to the bottom to give it some weight. And that's what we're uh, invest looking at. It'd be about 50 bucks for each one for mobile outreach and for our satellite where we have to, you know, have things be mobile and be stored away in, 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 in the store as opposed to the, the hallway where things take place. And I've seen a lot of the, of the vinyl shower curtains around Indianapolis. I really was, you know, made a joke about it because it was at the postal service. You would think the government would be a little bit, you know, higher standard, but it's, uh, it, 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 it seems functional. Uh, you know, Margaret's taking pictures of uh, areas where she's seen it and, and you know, that, that is an option. But again, I can remember plexiglass is at a premium. It's very expensive. So do some, do some online research. I'll be happy to uh, uh, share the link I have to what we're looking at as well. And my little uh, mock-up, I have a graphic for the, the shower curtain fix on the coat rack. Anybody else want to jump in on uh, cleaning products um, and or other ways you are 
you know, trying to sanitize and keep your space clean as most people just using Lysol wipes and yeah we have a lot of the standard uh, Lysol wipes uh, using a lot of those all over the store and in the warehouse Yes, and you'll see in my document um, that I sent where we get our resources. Most of it's donated from Staples, the large majority of our cleaning supplies. And we're using the regular, you know, hand sanitizing wipes, hand sanitizing. We got a beautiful donation of spick and span disinfecting spray, a whole pallet. So that was we're really thankful. And we actually gave a lot of that out to the teachers. So they really like that. All right. Um, if you guys can kind of jump in, um, I'd like to get how that. Um, COVID-19 is going to change things from staff perspectives, like what changes are you going to have to make uh, with like staff and what precautions are they going to have and any concerns um, or ideas that you have in that arena? Well, I'll jump in since we already are operating and I already have staff. So the first thing we did was we put in um, COVID staff policies and procedures into place um, where they all had to um, review, read, agree to and follow. And that was put together by my board of directors. And um, so we had that put into place. All of my staff um, are required to um, hand sanitize when they come in, wash their hands. Every one of them has to wear a mask. There's no exception. Um, and they have been wonderful. No, nobody has complained. Nobody is having a problem with it. I think it's been great. Um, we kind of operate a little bit differently. So at, at each checkout station, each cashier or clerk or whoever, staff person, they have a whole setup for sanitizing both for themselves and for the teachers. So the pens um, get put in different cups. Um, we do have sneeze guards at all stations. They have hand sanitizing, um, cleaner, Kleenex, um, everything that they need to sanitize between, between um, teachers. So, um, and I, we haven't had any issues, any problems. Um, if they, if they, like I had a teach or a staff person yesterday that had heat exhaustion and she wasn't feeling well and we are encouraging everybody that no matter what, why they're not feeling well to stay home and they've been following that really well. You know, it's in our, in our genes to work, but when we're not feeling well, no matter whatever reason it is, we are encouraging them to stay home and they are following. All right, we got a question on here. What constitutes a deep clean? Um, so like, what are you doing like when you're cleaning between um, sessions and some of these other things to keep the store beyond just the wiping down of clipboards and carts um, every time? Any, well, any countertops, uh, countertops, door handles. Uh, those, are the, those are the big ones. Any common area that more than one person is gonna be be touching or capable of, of getting their hands on is, is the big thing to look for when you're doing your deep cleaning. Wiping it down with uh, hand, hand sanitizing wipes or with a cleaner and paper towel. Yeah, we were gonna institute a, a, an hourly cleaning of bathroom, wiping down the kitchen. Of course, any station after, they, after it's used and also any station, the workstation, if some volunteers in an area working, when they're done with their area, they have to clean it up before they leave. Um, you know, disinfecting wipes, uh, diluted uh, bleach cleaners and cloths um, that we think that's more successful for, uh, for especially for like carts and stuff. Uh, instead of going through constant wipes, we can make a bucket of bleach uh, on a daily basis and use that. Um, We've also looked into having um, the whole center sanitized. Um, and what was the price? What was the quote? The quotes were running um, as low as $400 to $1,000 average. Um, uh, depending on the company and and, when, and what their claims are for how they sanitize. Right, right. But we're thinking about doing that before the volunteers or the teachers come back. So we did all of our floors. We sanitized all of our floors. We had a, a company come in. It was about a thousand dollars, but I felt that it was really worth it. This was during the time that we were closed. And then, as far as the deep cleaning, we have. Um, sheets made up in each area and people that need to sign off on what was cleaned and, and how often it was cleaned. So it's really, really helpful that nothing gets overlooked. So for example, the bathrooms, the kitchen, the carts, um, in the volunteer room, all of the areas in the volunteer area as well. So it really helps that they're able to um, sign off on those documents to ensure. Also what I like about it is we have our, in our bathrooms, 
on the back door is the sheet. So the teachers can see that the bathrooms are being cleaned regularly. The volunteers can see, the staff can see. So we're on top of it all the time to make sure that um, everybody can see that those things are being done um, really deeply. One of the areas that I like to remind everybody, we don't think about it, and I'm sure you guys all use carts like not shopping carts, but carts to take product out to the floor. We forget about those handles. So we're doing those on a regular basis, making sure that the handles on the carts that carry product are cleaned on a regular basis. Also all of our, like we, we have a um, computer where everybody uses, so they have to disinfect the mouse each time they use it. So we have disinfecting, um, sanitizing stuff there for them to use it. So just try to think of any high touch or regularly touched items making sure we're staying on top of it. Or will you share um, an example with me that I can send out to people of what that sheet looks like? Of course, uh, that, yeah, be happy to. That could be helpful. Uh -huh. um, we also had another question, if anybody, and I mentioned it in the question, is anybody trying to worried about ventilation or do anything with ventilation? Or is that, I mean, that's above my head, but I wanted yeah. to put that in there. <laughs> no, we haven't you. done anything about ventilation at all. Okay. All right. All right. Um, on a flip side, I got. Uh, there's another question on. Um, for those of you that are doing, have already done online shopping or do, adding online shopping, uh, can you talk about the process of how that works? Um, we've had a couple questions on that. Well, we do online shopping currently now. Um, Hector, do you want to talk about the yeah. platform? Right now, we're using Apple Base. Uh, right now, it's a minimal, um, traditionally, uh, under normal circumstances, we were only allowing a few schools that were very far away to do online ordering. With, uh, with the coming school year, that's going to be expanding. Um, there's going to be a limit on to how much we can package. We haven't decided what that number is going to be yet. Uh, 100, 150, 200 boxes a week. Um, things that go along with that are expense. You have to buy boxes, packing tape, labels. Uh, if you need, um, you need a designated area of how you're going to pack the stuff up. So tables, uh, if anybody has access to rolling carts, uh, carts with rolling, you know, to roll boxes across. Uh, things, there's all kinds of things like that to consider. Of course, your deliveries, and then it's going to be a lot more time if you have a driver, a van, or if the school system is helping you. Uh, gas, maintenance, if, you, if you're, we're lucky that the school district provides us with a van, so maintenance, gas, and, and the van are, are provided, but if anybody's taking care of it on their own, they have all the concerns of that and the more usage of that. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider inside and outside for, for, for the online. Right, and we were also considering, you know, elementary, middle, and high, they all use different supplies. So if we're going to allow the teachers to select what they want, that'll eliminate that. Um, we were thinking we would have one station that just packaged for elementary and then another station for middle and then another station for high. But I do believe so that we're going to go into the more the distribution where they can select online what they want and we'll pre-package. We'll select a couple days per week to do that and then on Fridays do deliveries. Yeah, traditionally we had done a lot of UB boxes or boxes that we had packed up with set materials. Uh, going forward, we're looking at going to uh, where we're more where the I teachers pick the items. Um, and uh, what was the last thing? Uh, I know that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a platform that you're using to let them pick the items, or you're just going to use like a Google form, or you have a well, the Apple base is, is, is oh, okay. prepared. You pick, we, you pick which products you want to add to it. Uh, what's oh. your limit of how many pieces are going to be for each mm -hmm. product? I mean, I mean, uh, how many? total pieces you're going to have for each product and then the limit that the teachers can get on each product. Now, now we did have one concern and that is I know a lot of you receive Joanne products. So um, that is, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's what one or two of the same item, maybe three or four or five. So we're, um, we're going to try to have a, a way that we can really get those Joanne products to the teachers, um, whether we have them come in and look, um, we haven't decided how we're going to do that yet. Yeah, we're limiting or the amount. Of, them to a school. Sorry. We're limiting the amount of teachers in the center, but we're and we're hoping that they have time. Not every teacher touches those kind of items, but for the ones that are interested, we're, um, uh, it's still going to be available. We're looking at um, a couple different ways. If we want to distribute it to the schools in mass. So say we get um, one case of ribbons, one case of flowers, one case of whatever, and then we contact the local school and ask them if they want it. The other thing is having a special um, shopping days or whatever for uh, one school could have an art teacher per school come in and pick what they want of those kind of items. 
Uh, those, those are just a couple things we're considering. We haven't uh, nailed anything down yet. Really quick on the Joann's, just to let you guys know what we do. We get thir we pick up from 13 different stores. So we, you can imagine how much Joann's we have. It's an enormous amount. So what we do is we pre-bag it for the teachers and they get a bag. Yes, they don't get to pick everything, but also it helps to distribute it all fairly. And um, somebody doesn't take all the good stuff and we get left with not the great stuff. And if they decide that they don't want some of the stuff in the bag, we just encourage them to either donate it back to us or give it to a te another teacher that might be able to use it. It has worked really well for us. We've been doing it for about four years. Um, the teachers love it. Every time we say we have Joanne bags available, they're here ready, willing, and able. The biggest challenge right now is putting them together because we've always used big groups of volunteers to do that with. Mm. Right now I have a very small staff that are doing it themselves. Joanne's hasn't really picked up their big um, donation yet. You know, they haven't, they keep stalling. And so we haven't gotten as much as before, but that is a, another way to distribute it. And um, it goes really fast that way. Yeah, that's one thing we were considering is, is, is uh, bagging for this coming year. Yeah. We were planning anything small, the buttons and the, and the, yeah. the you know, like I said, the ribbons and, and, and other items. Uh, yeah, we were definitely gonna go into that system. We're getting away from the onesie twosies and packing them in the bags, even if it's shelf for regular shopping, uh, that's yeah. what we're gonna do, yeah. Good. We just started to do that for this school year, putting them in bags to there and so there and fingering through over and over and over again. Uh, David, I got a question that's kind of directly towards uh, Indianapolis because I don't think anybody else. Uh, do you have any uh, beyond the sneeze guard, uh, shower curtains, any specific mobile safety um, cleaning procedures? Um, and we, other than hand washing the masks for teachers, uh, we'll ask them to come with a mask. If they don't have a mask, they'll be available for $2. Um, we'll, have, we'll have the hand washing, you know, the sanitizing stations. Uh, we are, we are providing gloves for the teachers to wear. Um, you know, there's there's opinions all over the board about the efficacy of that. Uh, we're leaning more towards you know it does eliminate you know some direct touches. Um, one of the th other things that we're looking at on 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 the, the you know, eliminating touch eliminating touches or minimizing is you just can't be touchless. That it's just impossible in a in a in a store environment. Um, since we do take payments uh, for registration, we're looking at different ways of taking that other than a tablet that you know two people touch and then everyone else touches after that for credit card uh, uh, transactions. We're debating about whether to accept cash uh, to eliminate that. Uh, the biggest thing that we're doing, we, we have a, a, scan, a scan tag system where tags are on the shelves, you pick the tag up with the product and the tag gets reused. We are eliminating that. Uh, and going back to uh, what was old is now new, We're going back to a, a clipboard system. Uh, and uh, we use Apple Base and, and, and we find that 40 scan, 40 scan bars on one sheet of paper is too narrow and too, it's hard to, it's hard to scan on target for a lot of our volunteers who are seniors. So we're going to uh, uh, have item numbers at each item as long as, as well as the limit and the teacher will come go around with a clipboard that circles like number item number one we took that we took no, item number 10 item number 11 and then when the uh, teacher presents that to a volunteer there's a a, a, a stand-up binder that has the barcodes in with the corresponding item number so they can just look at the sheet and go scan 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 flip a page scan scan the barcode tags um, I think that's a really interesting point about trying to limit touches. Is anybody else having anything trying to limit the amount of times teachers are touching items or um, because I know that's a great concern on our part here is just trying to cut down the number of touches for each teacher and each item. I don't, I don't you know, just to expand. If you listen to what we're doing, we're doing a heck of a lot more than what our retail grocery store is doing. So I, I think it's common sense to be that practical, uh, but then we also have to, you know, to sort of measure in a way, uh, uh, 
you know, not going overboard, but, you know, just sort of keep a perspective on everything. Um, you know, like I said, we, we talked about, you know, books or something that you, you fan through and look at. Um, yeah, like teachers want a particular color of a notebook and they're all, you know, mixed colors on the shelf and pick a kind of folder. Uh, I know initially we'll, we're having our, our vendor for uh, two pocket folders, uh, bundle them in, in packs of five. And so it eliminates, you know, the color, you get the selection that's in the pack and, 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 and that's what you get. Um, so, you know, I, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's, it's more about minimizing than it is eliminating because it's, it's, it's impossible to eliminate. Yeah, I think just having multiple hand, hand sanitizing stations around the center. So as the teachers finish with the product, if they feel, you know, more comfortable, you know, hand sanitizing themselves right then and there, you know, but you're not going to be able to keep the people off the off the products and 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 wipe them all down. It's really. And like many states, Indiana is in a in a, in a phase program of, of of opening, and by the time school starts, uh, Indiana will be in what they call phase five, and you know. A lot of restrictions are being waxed. I can't remember the specifics, but you know, right now we're at only 50% capacity in restaurants and outside dining. Uh, retail is at 75% capacity. All that changes July 4th, ironically, as Independence Day when things are, are more lax. But uh, you know, I think it's encouraging what everyone's saying is that we're 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 sticking with the, the curve to flatten the curve and keep the curve flat, uh, that's, that's very impressive for all of us to be looking at that. Do any of the rest of you, um, David touched on this, um, handle money or transactions at no. point of sale and how are you trying to um, No, we do that? not. Um, no cash here, neither. Uh, no money. We do. we do. We do everything different. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we, um, do memberships and there is fee for some of our stuff. And the way we're doing it is we did get the plexiglass needs cards with the um, cutout in it. Um, we have credit card machines. And so what happens is we turn the credit card machine and the teacher actually puts the um, card in themselves and they take the card out themselves. So they're not touching the machines at all. And only the um, staff person is touching the machine. We do take cash and we haven't, my cash, my people that um, handle the cash all are wearing gloves um, and then sanitizing in between. So we haven't had any problem with that. Um, David, I know that you said that, you know, you guys were looking at tablets. Our credit card machines are working really well for us so that they don't have to touch them. We used to take the cards. Also, um, every teacher, when they come, they have to show us their um, ID. We have to match their ID with um, the database. And we used to just take it from them. And so now they, we no longer do that. They have to show it. Um, behind the glass to us and then we type their name in that way. So yeah, just trying to keep it as minimal as possible for touching. Um, so just going back um, as we kind of finish up, a lot of you guys have already touched on a lot of these, but I'd like to kind of almost just get everybody to go through on the shopping procedures part. Um, are you limiting time allowances in store? Are you setting time limits or um, I've heard a couple of you talk about putting arrows down and creating one-way paths. So are you creating um, paths? Um, add, and how are you doing that? Are you adding signage to the floor, to the walls? Um, at checkout, how are you uh, spacing people the six feet? Um, we've talked about removing books or putting them last to try to keep limits. Um, I know after last week's discussion, uh, we've kind of decided we're actually going to do book, we're pushing all our bookcases. Luckily, they're rolling outside. Um, so we'll be able to space them out that way and they'll start with books um, before they come in. Um, and then what ways, um, and we've talked quite a bit about, um, but any additional things you have about trying to limit paper or contact uh, with your teachers, I think uh, these are all questions we're all grappling with right now. We do have books here and they are already and they have been at the, because they were a bottleneck there at the end of the shopping. And then the uh, the younger kids books who've actually bundled them in the past so we're just continuing to bundle them to to reduce the amount of going through those uh signage on the floor um actually a couple ladies carly and uh, debbie here 
are going to donate crayons that are going to put on the floor as our arrows for the one way. Uh, Trent fits our name of our, our store. Uh, we're asking the teachers and we'll we'll nudge them as they get here trying to keep their shopping to 45 minutes to help keep the social distance so we're not getting so many people in the store. Uh, I did, did say we do have appointments and in the past if you've shown up early we let you in. Uh, if you've shown up late we generally let you in. Um, we're gonna have to stop that at least for the time being this year. If you're early you're gonna have to wait until your appointed time so we don't have too many people in the store and if you're late probably gonna have to reschedule. So that's that's gonna be a new one for uh, for us and for the teachers to get to get used to that. We're in the same boat, we're going from an hour uh, to uh, an hour appointments, not to 45 minute appointments. And we're gonna be more strict about what the time they get there. They're gonna have a little leeway, but not much uh, for their appointment times in and out. Uh, we'll be giving them reminders. Uh, there's a limit to how many teachers we're allowing in the store at the time. Uh, otherwise they have to wait. Um, uh, asking them to social distance, have signage on the floor and maybe hanging from the ceiling uh, for uh, just reminders so don't forget the social distance. Uh, annotate, uh, noting our hand sanitizing stations as well. Um, uh, Brad, I'd love to hear, Barb, how you're doing your checkout. Um, so yeah, checkout is, so we um, purchase social distancing stickers and Joel also has that link. He'll sh share that resource with everybody afterwards. So we literally went around and we put within our checkout se section, put those stickers down on the floor. And then we also have a shopping cart that is separated between the cashier and the person coming to check out to make sure that we have that distance as well. And then only the, um, the cashier, the staff person handles it at once they receive it and then they push it out to the teacher when they're done. So the teacher isn't handing any products or anything. The, um, staff person is handling them on the way out. Um, it seems to be working well. And then, um, like I said, the, I think the stickers on the floor and then just lots of the CDC, I, I really recommend those because what's really great about them is they come from the CDC. And so when people see those, they know that we are following guidelines that are set out by the federal government. And um, they're beautiful. Like I said, laminate them and put them everywhere that you can think of. And then as far as letting the teachers shop for uh, length of time, the week that we did the appointment time, we kept them about 30 minutes, but we are not limiting them right now. But we are keeping track. We don't want any more than 24, 25 teachers in this court one time. If it seems to be that there are more than that, then we won't allow anybody until the store, until somebody leaves. Our books are pretty open enough that they're not really on top of each other in our book section. Do you have um, tickets? Do they give tickets to when they cash out? Not cash they do out, not. but they, they do, do not. not. So they just look at the product? Yes. So it's yes. kind of like Trader Joe's. They'll move the cart to the side for. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes. So you're not flipping anything underneath the plexiglass or anything like that. No. Gotcha. No. Makes it easier. Mm hmm. All right, we have um, a question. Um, since many of our schools are planning to prohibit the use of shared supplies, does anyone have plans or ideas to prepare or distribute prepackaged student supplies, I guess in individual packages? Um, I think we were gonna let the teachers distribute those from our end. So I've been, yeah. I've been um, talking with Jessica to try to get clear vinyl pencil pouches so that we could do that. Um, the teachers are going to probably be the ones distributing them, but we'll probably try to put them together ourselves. And we are actually going to do a huge back to school campaign just for that reason. So we're hoping to get the donations of the school supplies so that we can put together prepackaged. We want, I really want the clear vinyl ones so that they can be disinfected and um, be see-through. See so that's our hope. That's what we're going to try to do. Um, and then getting down to our final question, um, are there any hidden costs um, that are coming with, that you're noticing in your centers uh, coming with um, all the preparations we have to make for COVID? And are there any sources for funding that you figured out that you'd be willing to share with the, with the group? Um, 
So yes, on um, extra costs, of course the sneeze guards were expensive, but I felt they were necessary. Um, and the stickers were something that we purchased. As far as cleaning supplies, we haven't had to purchase any of that. Our, um, I think I shared this on base camp at one time. Um, we have a community foundation. So if any of you have community foundations in your state, they are the ones that stepped up and had a COVID um, funding source. So we were able to get $14,000 just to cover any extra cost or loss of income. So it was definitely a blessing because most of our grants are um, restricted. And these these, these $14,000, we could use it for whatever. Um, okay. We have not tapped into yeah. that, really. We probably have only spent about $2,000, to be honest, but we had a huge loss of income from programs canceling and not being able to do it. So it'll help offset costs. Similar, uh, similar here, community, uh, community foundation was a great help here too, to get some COVID-19 emergency funding. Uh, another thing we've done is, uh, Steve, our executive director on restricted grants, which ours are, a lot of them are restricted also, we actually contact the funders and ask them if we could unrestrict them. And they've been very generous about that to give us more leeway to use the funds as we felt necessary. Same with the Broward <laughs> Education Foundation. Uh, we've been very blessed with our donors where they actually have reached out to us and said, um, there's no restrictions, do what you have to do. We've even had a lot of donors reach out to us and say, here's, we understand that times are tough. Here's a thousand dollars, use it the best way possible. So we're, we're very blessed. One of our regular donation partners actually had special funding for COVID related uh, grants. So you might want to check with some of your, your regular donors and see if that's an opportunity that's available. Another free source that, that we found uh, is a lot of the uh, distilleries and breweries are making hand sanitizer and they're also donating that to uh, nonprofits that could use it. Uh, yeah. it the city government in Indianapolis also had, for small businesses, they had uh, packages that contain masks, sanitizer, and a few other items as well. So, and uh, so you know, maybe your local your local government has things for small businesses or chamber of commerce. You know, sources to look at. The the breweries and distilleries have been pretty generous with uh, gallons of hand sanitizer. Good idea. Very good idea. Um, I just want to be vigilant of everybody's time and let everybody get off and finish their. Friday, so we're almost um, out of time. Um, thank you to Dave and David and Mary Lee and Hector and Barb for sharing so much of their plans. Um, I am going to figure out how to get the email list off the registration. I will be sending out um, uh, some of the um, uh, documents that they've shared with, uh, uh, with me um, to you. Hopefully I'll get that this afternoon. If not, look for that by Monday at the latest from me. Um, if anybody, would like to uh, be a facilitator and host and put a group together on volunteers. Um, I'm more than happy to be the tech support and um, support however we can on making that happen. But I really do appreciate everybody be here today. Um, if you are willing to help out, just let me know and we will, I'll be happy to move that over to you. So thank you for, um, is there any last, anything anybody needs to add from the panel? that you really wanted yeah. to tell everybody all right well, thank you very much everyone thank yeah, thanks so much to, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you need anything yeah uh, us as well we, we're all in this together so we can all support each other absolutely this is a great time for us to band together to support each other all right well we'll get this out and up on youtube for anybody that uh wanted to go back and um lost um and i'll share that link as well in the email Thanks, Joel. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. You too. Thanks, guys. Take care. Take care.